All right, now we're looking at second order differential equations. Here we have a linear second order differential equation. And what we want to do is we want to find the characteristic equation and then use that to find the general solution. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to make some generalizations. So if g of t here is equal to zero, then we can call this a homogeneous differential equation. So let's do that. Let's just erase that. If we write g of t as zero, now we have homogeneous. The next thing that we want to do is we want to say that p of t and q of t, if these are constants, then we can write this whole equation as in this form. a y double prime plus b y prime, supposed to be a plus, uh, plus c y is going to be equal to zero. Notice that a here is just going to equal one, but we just put it there anyways. So what we want to do now is we want to make another assumption. We want to say that uh, y is going to be equal to e to the rt. It's okay, we don't know what r is yet, but we're going to solve for that later. So if we make this assumption, then we can say that y prime is going to be equal to r e to the rt. And then again, that y double prime is going to be equal to r squared e to the rt. So if you take these and plug them back into this equation here, we're going to have a times y prime prime, which is r squared e to the rt, plus b times y prime, and y prime is r e to the rt, plus c times y. So we have c times y, this is e to the rt, e to the rt, this is all equal to zero. So now what we do is if you just factor this e to the rt out, it's in every term, so we have e to the rt times a r squared plus b r plus c, this is all equal to zero. Now the next thing that we want to do is just divide both sides by e to the rt to get rid of it, <clears throat> and we'll have a r squared plus b r plus c is going to be equal to zero. And here we have, right here, this is going to be called what uh, is our characteristic equation. Now, if we solve for r, uh, the roots of this characteristic equation, we'll be able to use that to, uh, to give us actually the general solution to the original differential equation. So in order to find r, you simply just have to use the quadratic equation. So we will say we have r1 and 2. Uh, there's a maximum of two roots here because it's a uh, quadratic. It's going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. Now there's three different cases that we can have for our roots. We can have if root 1 does not equal root 2 but they are, in fact, a member of the reals. Uh, we can also have if root 1 equals root 2, and they're a member of the reals. And then we can also have, uh, we could have root 1 not equaling root 2, um, and th there would not be real numbers, so that would mean that we would have to have b squared minus 4ac to be less than zero because then we'd be taking the square root of a negative number. Okay, so these are the three different cases. Uh, now if we have root one is not equal to root two and there are real numbers, then we can say that our general solution, you know, draw some arrows, we'll have y of t, this is our general solution, is going to be equal to c1 e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2t, it's r2t. And if we wanted to solve for the actual solution, if we were given some initial conditions, we could simply find what these two arbitrary constants are and then find the values for them and give us the actual solution. Notice that we'll already find, we'll already know what r1 and r2 is because we solved for them up here. So if we have, uh, if we had the two roots are the same to each other, we have y of t is equal to c1 e to the rt plus uh, c2 t 
TE to the RT. Notice that the, uh, the roots here are the same, because R1 is equal to R2, I guess we could say something like equals R, because they're just the same number. And notice the other difference is uh, here we have this extra T, whereas up here we didn't. So really the only difference is we have the same roots, where here we had different roots, and now we have an extra T in here. Now for the last one, um, this one's a little different. So I'll just write it and then I'll explain it to you after. So we had to have the general solution would be y of t is equal to c1 e to the alpha t cos of beta t. We'll talk about what alpha and beta here are in one second as soon as I'm done writing this. So then we'd have c2 e to the alpha t times sine of beta t. Okay, and now the way that you find alpha and beta, we can just write it up here. We would have alpha is equal to, actually, no, maybe let's do this in green, uh, just so you can see that it's matching up with this guy. So we have alpha is equal to negative b over 2a, and beta is equal to the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then you'll notice here that alpha is simply just this guy and beta is this guy. So you'll already have this information if you were solving for the roots. So this is the way that we solve our linear second order homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. Um, it's pretty particular, I guess, but we'll actually use this. Uh, we'll actually use these methods in more advanced problems. So I didn't go through the uh, the derivations of how to get these. Um, if you're in an uh, if you're in an introductory differential equations class on your test, they're not going to ask you to derive these uh, these formulas. Probably they're just going to be asking you to take a differential equation and get the general solution or the actual solution if it's an initial value problem. Um, if someone really wants to see how these are derived, shoot me an email. And I can probably just uh, make a video on that. But for now, I don't think that's really necessary. So anyways, um, I would recommend memorizing these guys, memorizing what alpha and beta are, so you can just bust that on in a test. And I will see you guys in the next video.